Good morning, folks. A couple of the data sites we normally use are down this morning. We'll try to avoid making that too obvious. Let's get to spaceweathernews.com. We're checking out the last 24 hours on our star, and in addition to the sunspot and coronal holes, those thin plasma filaments are turning to center disk today. Solar flaring remains low, but we did get a small event this morning. It was entirely non-eruptive, however. A slight brightening in the umbral fields is all we'll see. Both it and the small new region to his north are departing Earth-facing positions today. Solar wind here. ACE and DISCOVER showing a decline in solar wind pressure due to reduced plasma speed. That's purple on the left and yellow on the right. And it's leaving Earth's magnetic field calm and quiet and on that trend further today. We've got another two to three days before the solar wind arrives from these coronal holes, and until then, you'll remember from yesterday that we're in an earthquake watch. 6.4 struck last night in Papua New Guinea, luckily not large enough to cause too much concern there, and in a rarer location, 5.9 at deep blot echo depths in the Japan Sea off the North Korean coastline. Folks, we've got some new planetary magnetosphere animations from NASA here, and let's begin with the Earth. Many of you recognize the form, and so their representation of Jupiter's magnetosphere should look righteously more complex and powerful. Just like Earth, Jupiter's magnetic field is basically oriented north-south perpendicular to the line of the Sun, parallel with the Sun's polar magnetic field. Jupiter is close enough to the Sun that the solar wind still streams its field away in a magneto tail. Saturn is up next, an equally complex field with similar plasma torus donuts around it. However, it is far enough away from the sun that the solar wind just helps encapsulate the Saturnian fields. The streaming away in magnetotail production is not wholly absent, but it is not as extreme as you'll see on Earth or Jupiter. Up next, we're going to Uranus. Another relatively complex field, but dynamics here are based on its peculiar tilt that has its equator running end over end with the poles wobbling across the available directions. The errant magnetic fields are the ones mostly producing a magnetotail structure. It is far enough away that the tight in fields combine with the fast rotation to mostly insulate them from major perturbation. This leaves us at Neptune. We see much of the same with only a slightly less ridiculous tilt. Despite the size of these outer planets and their distance from the Sun, their magnetospheres look like larger versions of Earth's rather than the multi-torus fields we see at Jupiter. Antarctica. Larsen. The crack has finished. We have technically hit the definition of a caved iceberg, although it hasn't really gone anywhere yet, and the initial crack portions are trying to refreeze a bit. Eventually, the chunk will break off, but the region is far enough south to refreeze in winter, leaving us with years to go of a desalinating ice cube chilling the southern oceans. Deadliest weather on Earth yesterday hit a flashpoint. India and Pakistan are about at their limits in Kashmir, and the weather isn't helping frustrations with multiple deaths as buildings collapse in the rain at night, with those inside never knowing what happened. Brutal. Two more days, folks. Everyone pre-registered for the conference will enter a drawing on the 15th for free room upgrades and other gifts. You'll be on the speaker's floor with the rest of us. Space weather, human health, magnetic reversal, earthquakes, and the solar grand minima. Come enjoy yourself. We've got your wind maps, no school vapor run, and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.55 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.